அடுத்து நமது பிரதான பேச்சாளர் பேராசிரியர் குருபரன் குமார வடிவேல் அவர்கள் இவர் யாழ் பல்கலைக்கழகத்தின் சட்டப்பீடத்தின் தலைவராக கடமையாற்றியதோடு தாயகத்தில் அடக்குமுறைகளுக்கு மத்தியிலும் மனித உரிமை மற்றும் மக்களுக்கான பல்வேறு வழக்குகளில் வழக்கறிஞராக பங்கு பற்றி வெற்றி கண்டவர் இவர் தற்போது பிரித்தானியாவில் உள்ள ஆக்ஸ்போர்ட் பல்கலைக்கழகத்தின் பேராசிரியராக கடமையாற்றி கொண்டிருக்கின்றார் Our keynote speaker will be Dr. Kuruparan Kumara Vadivel. Dr. Kumara Vadivel served as an academic attached to the Department of Law, University of Jaffna, Sri Lanka, between 2010 and 2020, serving as a senior lecturer at the time of resignation. He served as the head of department between January 2017 and November 2019. He is also a practicing attorney and has appeared as lead counsel in a number of cases relating to post-war human rights and humanization law issues in northern Sri Lanka, including cases relating to the right of memory and remembrance in the post-war context, the rights of families of the disappeared and the post-war land issues. He is a co-founder of the Tamil Civil Society Forum and the founder chair of the Adiyalam Center for Policy Research based in Jaffna, Sri Lanka. He holds an LLB honors from the University of Colombo, a BCL from the Balloy College, University of Oxford, and a PhD from the University College London in Public International Law and Comparative Constitutional Law. He was awarded the Shevening Scholarship in 2010 and the Commonwealth Scholarship in 2013. Dr. Kumara Vadivel is at the Bone Bearer Institute at Research Visitor as part of the Oak Foundation funded project on civil liability of human rights violations. Notre conférencier principal ce soir sera Professeur Gurubaran Kumara Vadivel. Il a travaillé au département de droit à l'Université de Jaffna au Sri Lanka entre 2010 à 2020. Il est aussi avocat praticien et appelé des comme avocat principal dans un certain nombre d'affaires relatives au droit de la personne et au droit humanitaire dans le nord de Sri Lanka après la guerre. Il est cofondateur du forum de la société civile tamoule et président fondateur du centre de recherche sur les politiques adhéalam basé à Jaffna au Sri Lanka. Il a un LLB honneur de l'université de Colombo, un BSc de Balliol College, université d'Oxford et un doctorat de l'université college de Londres. en droit international public et droit constitutionnel comparé. Il a reçu la bourse Chevening en 2010 et la bourse de Commonwealth en 2013. Il est à l'Institut Boenvero en tant que visiteur de recherche dans le cadre de projets financés par Fondation Oak sur la responsabilité civile pour les violations des droits de l'homme. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup pour m'inviter à Uh, to this event organized by the Ottawa Tamil Association in lieu of the uh, Tamil Heritage Month uh, for 2021 uh, it's been a difficult year 2020 for a variety of reasons uh, all around the world uh, particularly covid-19 but also for uh, uh, Tamils particularly in the homeland as they um, experience the onslaught of a, of a very oppressive uh, regime uh, so let's hope uh, and persevere and 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 uh, feel resilient uh, to be able to ch- face the challenges in this new year and hopefully as the saying goes thai parandal vali parakam in this uh, very short uh, address um, i want to focus uh, on 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 two things primarily uh, one um, an understanding of the current um, status quo and two uh, the ways forward in terms of what kind of thinking and what kind of approach i believe uh would be would be needed for us to be able to think of a trajectory of a future uh that uh, in which we can exist as a people on the homeland so let me start with the question of the status quo i think we are in a uh in 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 a period of transition even after 10 years um after the end of the war now when i mean we are in a period of transition not only uh, i'm not invoking the language of transitional justice at all i'm talking about the transition uh, that is taking place within the tamil community we are still grappling with the uh, trauma the um, uh, the the pain that was inflicted on us 
by the genocidal uh, events of the last phase of the war. Uh, the genocide is, of course, uh, uh, continuing in, um, in other forms and means even post-war. Uh, but we are also uh, unable to uh, comprehensively understand and grasp a, a future ahead in terms of what needs to be done, both as a political community as well as a social community. Uh, in that, we, we are still trying to find our sort of way through in terms of how to deal with the post-war scenario in the backdrop of the fact that an, an organization that had given leadership to uh, the Tamil Polity uh, for 30 long years, uh, for at least uh, two decades, um, uh, um, uh, disappeared from our midst or was made to disappear from our midst uh, in, in 2009. So I think uh, this, this period of transition... Uh, cannot go on for longer uh, in that the Tamil community needs to have a proper rethink, rethought about its uh, own goals, about its own politics, about its, about the way we construct society, the way in which we think through uh, these, um, uh, these things uh, so that we can um, um, uh, forge a future ahead uh, for our people on the homeland. Now, why I say we are in a period of transition is because uh, there hasn't been enough political thinking, there hasn't been enough um, social thinking around how we uh, get to the larger aims of the Tamil polity. Uh, what type of strategies, what type of approaches, what type of ideological shifts, if necessary, are required to uh, required in the post-war scenario? I I I I, I think in the in the aftermath of a catastrophe or, uh, like May two thousand nine. It was essential that we bring our minds together to 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 be able to understand the uh, not only understand the calamity that had uh, befell the Tamil people, but also to uh, think through these issues collectively and from a bigger picture. And I think that conversation hasn't taken place. That might be because we are still uh, sort of you know lingering from the pain that has been inflicted on us and the pain that is being continuously inflicted on us. But it is time that we. Uh, do that. And I think that sort of conversation is something that we must invest in for our own future. And that is something that the homeland must lead on, but something that the diaspora can contribute to. And I think most of the time what we find is that this conversation is affected largely by uh, by, 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 by groupism within the Tamil uh, political uh, uh, community, uh, by, by very divisive, uh, very short-term approaches, uh, of um, 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 what I would call, you know, identifying people only by camps, by groups, by parties, by... So this is uh, not just a call for unity. I'm not calling for unity in that sort of, you know, very simplistic sense. What I'm calling for is for everyone, whatever grouping, whatever ideological background that we come for, uh, to, 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 to understand the need for sort of a broader approach to broader thinking, a larger sort of big picture sort of understanding of the situation. I think that is very necessary. Uh, in, 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 the, in the present context, if you, um, I, mean, I mean, everyone knows what this, what this particular regime is capable of. I, of course, think that uh, the current regime is a continuation of the singular Buddhist uh, nationalist uh, governments of the past. It's not a variant. Uh, it's not a, sorry, it's not a deviant. Um, the, uh, what the Rajabakshas are today uh, espousing in terms of singular Buddhist nationalism, uh, the foundations of which was uh, led by uh, Anagarika Dharmapala, followed through by many leaders, uh, SWRT Bandanayaka, the UNP, J.R. Jayavadana, Chandrika Bandanayaka, Kumarathame included, and I would even say Ranul Vikramasinghe. So this isn't, this is, you just have different um, mutations probably or different uh, gradings of, of how uh, severe and how deep uh, the hegemony is uh, that emanates from singular Buddhist nationalism, but it's a continuation. But what this government, where this particular regime stands out is in the fact that they are a little more bolder about their singular Buddhist nationalism. They are currently particularly given that they are not unable, uh, that they found out in the last one year that they are unable to deal with the economic um, uh, hardships of the singular people, how to alleviate the economic hardship of the singular people, they are again uh, resorting to uh, what, uh, uh, what ethno-nationalism does best is to appeal to the sentiments of the singular Buddhist uh, uh, nationalists. And for that, they've 
they are constructing a new enemy in terms of the Muslims, but also uh, when the necessary beating up the uh, old enemy, which is the Tamils. So, so that 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 sort of approach is going to continue. Uh, this sort of model of where you can't uh, succeed with governance, you uh, um, yeah, you whip up the sentiments of the of the majority community around ethno nationalism is is a model of governance that has so far worked in Sri Lanka, particularly well handled by uh, the Rajapakshas. So we will see that mostly. I mean, despite the technocratic sort of you know posturing that is put out by the current government by go to by Rajapaksha that he's there to bring in development and that he'll bring in expertise and so on and so forth. Uh, we know that that is not working. Uh, we know that um, uh, the economy is uh, is is crumbling, uh, and and so uh, and so they will resort to uh, further more sort of you know ethno nationalist uh, means of governance of of, of trying to um, sort of you know create this enemy, keep this enemy alive, uh, so that the single is continue to vote them into government. So I mean, in that sort of context, what should uh, Tamils do? And I think why there are two things. One is we must uh, uh, be be very clear in terms of uh, what our goals are, and 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 with regard to a political solution, just because there is no as a government in the south that is going to deliver on even the basic demands of the Tamil people, uh, i.e., uh, self-government within uh, within uh, United Sri Lanka, uh, that shouldn't mean that we should be giving up on the fundamentals of the struggle. Right. Uh, I don't think we should dumb down uh, on articulating our demands, uh, um, uh, 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 our political demands uh, based on we should not come down from uh, the articulation of right to self-determination, for example. Um, um, and I don't think, uh, for example, we should be um, um, uh, uh, lurking on the sort of margins of uh, saying that, you know, we are not necessarily asking federalism that we are asking for some form of a reworded unitary state those i think are extremely problematic in the sense that they do not understand those kind of maneuvering uh, manipulation that intelligent politicians think that they are doing uh, intelligently won't really work in the face of single Buddhist nationalism that controls the state because whatever maneuvering manipulation that you do they will be able to um, reconfigure the state uh, into a strong unitary state unless there are deep uh, uh, deep uh, um, uh, checks and balances that are put in there in the constitution in the form of um, uh, you know very strong federal provisions that doesn't allow the central government to take away uh, powers uh, that that inherently belong uh, to the tamils so I think I think I think I think it is important. Uh, we are not going to uh, see this government definitely come up with a political solution. They are probably going to come up with a constitution that is going to tweak with the Thirteenth Amendment. Uh, I uh, uh, consistently have said that the Thirteenth Amendment does not uh, is not uh, does not form even a starting point to a political uh, solution. I've said this um, since 2012, uh, 13 when there was a a huge debate around 13 plus um, i i don't think there is anything to be that can be added to the 13th amendment within the unitary framework of the constitution uh, but right now the struggle will be i mean the struggle is being recast uh, as a struggle to retain the 13th amendment which is problematic uh, tamils are being asked to uh, defend the 13th amendment because a single about this uh, uh, extreme nationalists want to do away with it i think we should be very clear that we are against taking away the 13th amendment but we also must be very clear that we are not for uh, a solution based on the 13th amendment so these are some of the fundamentals that i think that we should be very clear about and communicate uh, for eternity if need be uh, because uh, uh, a solution from the south is not going to be forthcoming. Uh, I think the Tamil people have uh, proven themselves uh, to be uh, to, to be adaptive. Uh, we've definitely um, uh, the, the homeland has uh, clearly indicated that you are willing to settle for a solution within the United Sri Lanka, and that's how that's how far we should go on the accountability question. I think it's uh, it's very important. Uh, I think a very significant development took place early this year um, with the joint letter signed by the uh, three main political formations and civil society groups. It leaves a clear indication that uh, the accountability uh, issue being stuck in Geneva-based UN institutions is not going to deliver. It needs to move to New York. Uh, we understand the skepticism around the ICC demand. Uh, the question that is being posed is how come the UN Security Council is going to refer 
uh, Sri Lanka um, uh, uh, to the ICC in the wake of uh, the fact that China and Russia might veto uh, any such resolution. Uh, well, that scepticism is well founded, but also we must realize that things change quite fast in geopolitics. Uh, and so if there is a uh, change that is coming, I'm not saying that uh, such a change is forthcoming, that we should be prepared, that our demands must be up there, must be ready to, to be able to capture that uh, sort of geopolitical uh, moment that might arise in the future, uh, that might then uh, move the accountability question uh, to serious international uh, forms of accountability. Uh, so in that sense, a joint letter um, um, uh, for the first time where Tamil uh, national uh, political parties across the spectrum have come together and articulated the demand of, of saying, you know, enough in Geneva. Uh, Geneva, uh, UNHRC has very limited jurisdiction in terms of fact-finding, um, putting pressure on the, uh, on the state concerned uh, in, if, uh, in terms of improving their human rights standards. They don't really have... Uh, a significant accountability mandate and the accountability mandate rests with institutions, UN institutions in uh, New York, primarily the UN Security Council, UN General Assembly. That's a gist of the letter and that's a very important uh, development that has taken place. And I think um, uh, the, the powers that be that want to handle the Sri Lanka situation to be able to reap their own sort of, you know, benefits out of it now have to confront the fact that uh, the ones on behalf of whom they are saying that this uh, uh, accountability and justice must happen are now articulating very clearly what the demands are. And this is the kind of advocacy uh, that is necessary. Uh, this is what Sivaram said, you know, advocacy must be based on our own sort of understanding of our own situation or in terms of what we want to say rather than what um, um, uh, what the powers be want us to uh, ask and demand. Uh, but also, I think it's important um, and that we take initiatives uh, to uh, preserve uh, documentation, to preserve evidences with regard to um, uh, what has happened. Uh, there must be local initiatives uh, that are supported. These, of course, must happen uh, in a way that doesn't affect the uh, victim community, uh, the victims, as well as the civil society actors on the ground. Uh, but we must be prepared uh, uh, to 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 be on um, uh, to pursue this um, uh, to pursue accountability on the long run, and that means preparation, that means documentation, that means initiatives on the ground, supported by uh, people uh, abroad, uh, by our brother and abroad, abroad uh, that that um, preserves that evidence, documents, and 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 uh, and, and makes sure that you know uh, it's documented, not just for as I've always said. Uh, because there might be a future tribunal or an international criminal court looking into it, but because we also need to preserve social memory around it, social memory around the genocide, uh, because these are things that the Sri Lankan state is very keen to erase, and I think we need to document them and find ways to preserve them. So let me finally then get down to a much more important thing. I want to talk about this um, uh, more in detail, but I'm running out of time. But may I say this, I, I've, I've also uh, been talking about this for the last many number of years, that we need to invest now. While there's not going to be much action on the political solution and accountability front, unfortunately, I think what we can do, what is in our control, is to uh, engage in what I would call uh, nation-building exercises. This would mean, A, making use of the institutions of state that are currently available, be it local government institutions, provincial council, the parliament, so on and so forth, uh, in that uh, electing uh, people who are true to the cause, uh, who are also able to make use of those institutions within the legal framework of the Sri Lankan state to be able to deliver on development, uh, to be able to develop and uh, deliver on the needs of the people. So this would need... Um, uh, good, uh, good, gov good governors on our part, um, people who are able to make use of the current system to the maximum extent possible, be it within the provincial council or within the local government bodies, to be able to deliver on services so that we build back the nation uh, so that it's strong to be able to put, uh, to put forward uh, more strongly its political demands and demands for justice. The second is uh, what I would call uh, initiatives beyond the state or parallel to the state. Uh, this would mean strengthening social organizations, strengthening entities, strengthening civil society, uh, uh, forging together alliances, um, 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 uh, creating institutions that, that, uh, that actually uh, end up taking the leadership 
um, over these issues. Uh, so, for example, we need uh, we need to think through uh, whether we can set up institutions that uh, that uh, that that would have an over overarching mandate uh, to look into the agricultural needs of the Tamil people of the fisheries sector, for example, or the cooperative movement. Uh, so, we need to think through on uh, building up like there was during the uh, de facto state run by the LTT institutions of state, but in the non-state sphere run by Tamils, governed by Tamils in the non-state sphere that actually decide on and give direction uh, to the development needs of our people uh, in the future.